Hi, I'm David Rosenthal, and I'm fortunate today to be with Ian Price, Bob Wood, and Elaine Clark, all voiceover veterans, and we are going to have a roundtable discussion today. And just to show you what great actors we are, we're going to do it without the round table. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we, we are going to talk about that wonderful transformational moment uh, when we have been given a piece of copy, all right, and we have gone through that first stage, analytical stage, where we're doing all the things we're supposed to do, dissecting the piece of copy, who is it speaking to, who are we, all the adjectives, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we transform it, we kind of do away with all that stuff, and we become the performer in front of the microphone. And I want to talk to each of you, and if you could address that in your own lives and in mm -hmm. your own experiences, how that works for you. So, um, Elaine? Oh, okay, well, yeah. I'll go ahead and start. I like to think of things as the job as two different sections. The first part is the analytical part, the mm -hmm. an analyzing the script where it's all thinking, and the other part is doing, and that's where you put it in your body. And so what we like to do is, is mesh the two and keep on thinking while we're performing. But if we just gesture, we move, and we, we act naturally, then it all comes out. But trusting that our body's going to do it, our brain's going to do it, our, our mouth is going to do it, is a really scary thing for a performer. So what we have to do is just breathe and say, <laughs> okay, here goes. And then if you start with an action, because acting is reacting, you're already reacting. And that's a regular conversation is just reacting. And that's part of your analysis of finding out what am I reacting to in order to get you into your body so that you just perform. So literally just move your body, for God's sake. <laughs> do true. something. Get started it somewhere. It's true. Yeah. That's all no. really that you have to do is if you move because... When we're comfortable with our bodies, we you know, just like us right here, we, we gesture, we move, we talk, we, we do all sorts of things. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and when we're uncomfortable, we don't move. Mm -hmm. So that's where it gets stiff. And when we have a piece of, uh, we have a script in front of us and we're standing in front of this little microphone, we think, I can't move because I have electronics and other stuff and I must think. And we just, we just die. It just does not sound good. So moving is the key. That's fantastic. And you know, one of the things, Elaine, you say you love to move, right? And I, I know we've <laughs> been in a lot of classes together and, and we teach that in, in class. I tend to take the movement and I put that more in my head as, I want to visualize where I am, mm -hmm. and the, my movements come from that visualization. So I'm not, it's almost like an out-of-body experience to me. Once I've analyzed the script, I know where I'm going, the super objective, all that good stuff, then I almost transform myself mentally. I put myself in a situation, in a room, in a place, with someone, you, who, to whom I'm speaking, and the words just start flowing out of my mouth. I don't think about my body because it just does what it... I mean, it is, it's right now. It's like I'm Italian. Whatever can I say? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, but, but I'm, not, I'm not thinking right now about what my hands are doing. They just do it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, no, that's true. And it, it is that transformation that... that I, see, I like to become a Power Ranger. <laughs> no, it's not like a ninja. <laughs> if I become a Power Ranger every single time... Once in a million times, I'll get the job. No, so, okay, no. So, <laughs> one, one of the things I, I like to do, in fact, it's something that Elaine taught uh, in, in, <laughs> in her class, and it, it's to actually find the story behind the words that you're saying. And it may have absolutely nothing to do with the words that you're saying at all, but it's kind of the reason for why you're speaking. Because if there's no reason to speak, then why bother? Shut up, you know. And, and also, it's almost as if you're kind of, you get to the point where you're almost channeling the words. And I find that if I find, uh, I'm actually, I'm reading the words and thinking about them, then it's all gone horribly wrong, you know, because you shouldn't be in that position. You know, it should just be flowing out of you naturally as if you were having a conversation with somebody. Sure. And you just, mo you, you, without saying the word, you mentioned the moment before. What takes me or what compels me to say these words in this moment? It had to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that we just make up in our, in our cranium, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so if I can visualize that, the words, they're someone else's words, they, they really do become mine. Yes. That is really exciting. And that whole sense of, uh, uh, of imagination and creativity and bringing that sense of play that we like to talk about so much here that sense of play uh, brings you up to a completely different level. And if we can give in to that wonderful creative moment, mm -hmm. that's where anything goes. And we truly are in that wonderful 
enlightened moment where we are artists and performers kind of hooked into the muse there and making it happen. Is, are, are, are you saying to make ourselves vulnerable? Or a Power Ranger. <laughs> ah, Whichever thanks. comes first. Okay. <laughs> thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Internet Voice Coach.